Congratulations. Thank you, Steve. I, Stephen Mnuchin, do solemnly swear. I, Stephen Mnuchin, do solemnly swear. Now Mnuchin will head the Treasury Department with his signature on every American bill. Have you been working on your signature for the I have dollar? indeed. I, ha I have indeed. So I've been practicing it, so it'll be nice and neat on the money. Mnuchin's career has also been dotted with controversy. He profited from the housing meltdown. His father worked at Goldman Sachs, and Steve followed him to the firm. Mnuchin donated to both parties over the years, including Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign in 2008. You were both in Skull and Bones, the secret society. It's so secret we can't talk about what it. What does that mean for America? The conspiracy theorists are going to go wild. I'm sure they are. I don't know. I haven't seen the web. Number 322. <laughs> <laughs> you both were members of Skull and Bones, a secret society at Yale. What does that tell us? Uh, not much, because it's a secret. <laughs> Is there a secret handshake? Is there a secret code? I wish there were something secret I could manifest. 322, a secret number? Uh, there are all kinds of secrets, Tim, but one thing is not a secret. I disagree with this president's direction that he's taking the country. We can do a better job, and I intend to do it. And we'll be watching the Safe on the Campaign Trail. John Kerry, thanks yes, for joining us. They both belong to a group called Skull and Bones. The Yale University Secret Society Skull and Bones, better known to you as President George Bush. Now, for the first time in the history of that Yale club, two of its former members will go head-to-head -head for the presidency. You may think that George W. Bush and John Kerry have little in common, but both men count themselves as members of Skull and Bones, Yale University's oldest and some say most elite secret society. Skull and Bones dates to 1832. It was, in fact, a reaction to a secret society. The Masons, then much more influential than they are today. Founder William Huntington Russell thought of his little conclave as sort of anti-Masons. And as a home for the wealthy and the powerful and the people who would do anything for another Bones member. Each year, 15 Yale undergraduate seniors are tapped for membership, initiated in controversial, murky fashion. Fashion dramatized here in the movie The Skull. Skull above any other. Say Fashion satirized here in The Simpsons. Who gets Atlantis off the maps? Who keeps the Martians on their ass? We do, we do. Members of Skull and Bones, that is, not of the Stonecutters, gather on High Street in the Yale campus at The Tomb. New members, the neophytes, are expected to do things like lie in coffins and wrestle in mud and kiss a skull and confess their sexual histories in front of the group to bond themselves together further still and presumably just for a few laughs. Once you're in, you're in. Skull and Bones is for life. Talking about Skull and Bones is for others. And there are a lot of Bonesmen who did not talk, but did succeed. Henry Luce, who created Time Magazine and all its cousins. Harold Stanley, founder of Morgan Stanley. Henry Louis Stimson, the Secretary of War under FDR and Truman. William F. Buckley, Averill Harriman, longtime governor of New York. And then there are the presidents, William Howard Taft, whose father Alfonso had helped found the group, and whose son Robert was a senator. George Herbert Walker Bush, whose father Prescott was a Bonesman and a senator. The current President Bush, although his kid at Yale has not been tapped for skull and bones, even though they do admit women now. His child is not skull and bones. His opponent is John Kerry, Bonesman, class of 66. But if this needs to be weirder for you, try this. His wife, Teresa's first husband, the late senator from Pennsylvania, John Heinz. His father was skull and bones. So we have an all-secret society presidential election. Not that either of them are talking about it. The initiation rituals of a secret society that's been around since 1832 whose members have gone on to be leaders of Wall Street and the White House, the Senate and the Supreme Court. They're sort of trying to scare the initiates, make them, uh, you know, disorient them, frighten them. New York Observer investigative reporter Ron Rosenbaum accompanied a team of Yale students who shot these pictures nine days ago. Rosenbaum's curiosity about skull and bones was permanently piqued when, as a classmate of George W. Bush, he lived right next to the tomb the group's heavily fortified home. From their perch, Rosenbaum and his cohorts taped the tomb's courtyard. What they captured, they say, was initiates, known as neophytes, being forced to kiss a skull, then members performing a mock killing. It may look like your average fraternity nonsense, but Rosenbaum says it's not. Even though it may seem silly to us, it seems to mean something to them. And you can't argue with the success of Skull and Bones. Does it still exist? 
I mean, the thing is so secret that I'm not even sure it still exists. Back in 1996, using a night vision camera, we shot some of the only existing footage of a Skull and Bones initiation ceremony held at this foreboding building called the tomb. One legend has it that during these initiation ceremonies, pledges must climb naked into a coffin. Did you have to climb naked into a coffin for your initiation back in 1960? <laughs> Last time I was naked was sprinting down the street somewhere. No, I said... Bush and Kerry are just two of a virtual who's who of the nation's rich and powerful who have been so-called bones men. Yet skull and bones remain shrouded in secrecy. You'd see dozens of skulls, skeletons, art celebrating death, war memorabilia, and several allegedly stolen items that bonesmen uh, supposedly were supposed to take um, as gifts to the society's goddess. Still, Rosenbaum says the tape is a valuable artifact. An extremely rare view into the secret society that groomed the American ruling class for generations. The devil is in the details when we run the numbers. That's what your message is to the Iraqi people who are wondering. You're free, and freedom is beautiful. And, uh, you know, it'll take time to restore chaos and order, but we order out of chaos, but we will. Yeah, John. coat of arms of Donald Trump. Uh, there we have the double-headed eagle representing his uh, Scottish Germanic uh, her heritage. Make order out of places where there is chaos. That is our role. Are there really great secrets that you know that you can't share with people? Yeah. Yeah, there are. Uh, and you never write about them. No. It, maybe at a time in your life that no. you're like, oh, I'm 90, I'm going to do it. No. No, nothing. I am basically there to, uh, to make money. I cannot and do not look at the social consequences of, of what I do.